an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we are going to be talking about blood clots. Blood clots, or... A more medical term might be, uh, in particular, what we're going to be talking about today is deep vein thrombosis. So I know it's a, it's, it's a little bit of a unique topic and not something that we generally talk about, but I want to discuss why it's important for personal trainers to be aware of blood clots. And I have a guy that I've done work on and with that said, he's he's the lead singer of a 1980s hardcore punk band called the Crow Mags. And his name's John, but his stage name and the name of his new band is called Blood Clot. And I've decided that he went with Blood Clot because if he went with the medical name Thrombosis, that doesn't quite have the same hardcore punk ring to it. By the way, he is a huge fan of NASM and its uh, trainings and interventions that he's received throughout the years to keep his body strong, to maintain his mobility, his stability, uh, for the many Ironman competitions that he does every year. However, this episode isn't about him. It is about blood clots. And as you may know, very recently, I was on a very, very, very long flight to and from Singapore. And uh, it's about 20 hours total in the sky. And I, you, I'm an aisle guy on the, the airplane. I like to sit on the aisle. So uh, both of these long legs of the flight were on window seat. And so that's that's not really my happy place. Um, I and and the reason why is like I don't like to bother people to get up. And problematically, I have fewer liquids. I try to drink less water so that I am less likely to have to get up to go to the bathroom to bother these people that are in the aisle with me. So I uh I limited my amount of water and liquid intake, and I was so good. Like, I just tried not to bother anybody. I didn't get up. Um, all of that's problematic. Problematic because when blood clots happen, they happen. Usually, dehydration is a big part of it. And then sitting still for a very long time is a very big issue. So, and it happens a lot on airplanes. It is very common. Blood clots are very common on airplanes. So when I got to, to Singapore, I landed, my right calf was sore. But after a, a day or so, it was fine. But I was I was only there for a few days and then I flew back. So that's another 20 hours in the air. And when I landed, that pain was back again, but it was back full force. So painful Saturday morning when I landed all day. It was painful Sunday all day and on Monday it's still painful and I saw a friend at the gym and like you know you ask people some things sometimes because you hope that they will confirm that you're okay but um but you ask them because they would know enough so anyway she's a DPT she's doctor of physical therapy Anna Anna thank you so much for being there this day to not talk me out of my fears but to work me up <laughs> so i asked Anna doctor of physical therapy i was like hey listen i was on a really long flight to asia long flight back and my calf is killing me my right calf i fell asleep 
but I don't remember anything cramping. And so like, I don't think it's sore because it cramped and immediately her face, her face, the way she looked at me and I knew, I knew immediately she was going to say, she goes, I don't know. It sounds like a, it sounds like a blood clot to me. Um, she, and I was like, eh, I don't know. And she goes, Rick, I'm going to tell you right now, if you were my patient and you came to me for physical therapy, you're my patient, you told me that story, I would not work on you and I would send you to the doctor. I would send you straight away to a physician to get an ultrasound. And she was like, just do it. Just go to the doctor. And I was about to work out. And I was like, you think I work out first? She goes, no, nah, I'd, I'd go to the doctor first. I'd go to the doctor. And uh, she said, just go to City MD, right? So it's just a, a clinic that we have here in New York City. I don't know where else they are, but it's just a, like a drop-in clinic. She goes, COVID cases are low. It's the middle of the day. You'll be in and out. She's right. I went in. It was the shortest doctor's visit I'd ever had. She said to me, uh, you need to go get an ultrasound. I can't just look or feel your leg and tell you that's what it is. You have to get imaging. So, uh, so it did. Now let's talk about this and then we'll talk about the outcome of the imaging that has taken place. I want to talk about something. There's something called thrombin. Thrombin is an enzyme in the blood that causes clotting or coagulation. And this is really good for your body when cuts occur. So the thrombin is released, the blood thickens, and it, it creates a plug to keep the bleeding from happening. So that is thrombin. When a blood clot is formed, that is a thrombus, a thrombus, and a thrombus thrombosis, and I'm going to quote this from John Hops, uh, Johns Hopkins, and it says that thrombosis occurs when a blood clot, which is a thrombus, blocks veins or arteries, so it can be a venous thrombosis or it can be an arterial thrombosis. Symptoms include pain and swelling in one leg, chest pain, numbness on one side of the body, complications of thrombosis. Here we go, complications. This is why it's important, and this is why Anna said work out. I'd probably just go to the doctor right now. Complications of thrombosis can be life-threatening, such as a stroke or heart attack. Okay. All right. Things just got serious now. So I go on to look at it. The, the process of a thrombosis, there's constriction of the blood vessel. Number two, there's a formation of a temporary platelet plug. So the plug, the platelets, the blood starts to create a thickening. And then number three, this activation of the coagulation uh, starts to happen. All right. So why is that important when they say, well, I, I mean, we're talking about like calf pain. You have pain in your leg. How does that, how does a blood clot in your leg lead to potentially a uh, heart attack or a stroke. Now, a heart attack and a stroke are the same thing just in different parts of the body. So technically a stroke could be called a brain attack. It's, it's the same thing. Uh, and, and here's what happens. So a thrombus, this blood clot, pieces can break off. And it, when a piece breaks off of a blood clot, it's called an embolus. And it is the moving through the blood uh, stream. And I, because it's moving, when I think of embolus, I think of bus. So that helps me in my mind realize what's the difference between an embolus and an embolism, which you've probably heard of. The, the embolus is the broken off piece that moves through the bloodstream. And as it goes through the bloodstream, it can go into vessels. As they get vessels get smaller and smaller, this little piece that breaks off gets stuck in those smaller vessels, whether they're smaller arteries or smaller veins. Uh, again, arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins bring blood back to the heart. So an embolism can occur when that small embolus breaks off of the blood clot and moves through the smaller vessels and gets stuck. And then it occludes blood flow. And that is not good. Is not good. So if it gets stuck in the heart, it can cause a heart attack. If it gets stuck in the brain, it can cause stroke. If it gets stuck in your lungs, 
It can cause a pulmonary embolism. All right, so I go and I get tested. Interestingly, because I thought all of that testing would be in my calf because that's where the pain was, and they didn't really spend much time on my calf. They spent a lot of time on my upper inner thigh. And I said, why? Well, talk to me about what's going on. You know, I like to learn this stuff. And vicariously, you get to, to hear what's going on. You learn about it too. So the deep vein thrombosis, They said, I said, why are you doing this on my inner thigh? And they said, well, we have to look into the deep veins. And I was like, man, this whole time I thought the deep veins that they were talking about were in my calf because that's where the pain is. And she said, so you've got this, uh, potentially there is a blood clot that would take place in the upper inner thigh and it can go lower. And she did look into the calves. She spent most of the time in my upper thigh. And I said, well, why would people feel it so much in their calves? And what happens is that the, the blood can't get through very well. And so it starts to pool in the extremities and that can create pain in the calf. So that's that's the idea of this blood clot and that, you know, where it takes place and where the symptoms are, where you tend to feel it, which is very commonly in the calves uh, and on one side. So I got the results back. This is what I did. I, I They give you a, a portal to go to. So I, led, I read my own lab results. I read them and it was negative. They did not find... They did not find a blood clot. They did not find a deep vein thrombosis. This is very good news. It's very good news. Thank you. I appreciate that. But the doctor called to give me those results, and it went straight to voice message. going to tell you right now, you call my phone. I don't know your number. I ain't going to answer it. They left a message, and I thought, well, I already know the outcomes, but you know, I'm going to call back anyway. I'm glad I did because I already knew the results. However... When I called back, though there was not a blood clot or a thrombosis found, it did not mean that it wasn't there. And I was like, are you kidding me? So she goes on to tell me that that you may, it may be getting better. You may not have ever had one. Uh, it could be dehydration, which is what the DPT friend said. It could be uh, a, a cramp that led to pain in the calves, or it could still be a DVT, a deep vein thrombosis, and it could be something that just was not picked up. So if it stays the same for the next few days or gets worse, you got to go and do another ultrasound. Uh, you got to go and get another check to see if that is a blood clot because a blood clot or a DVT can develop over time. Now, what happens as the blood clots, I learned about this in pathology years ago. So when we're having this conversation uh, about blood clots, all of this stuff starts coming back that when, you know, your blood uh, thrombin kind of gets released through the bloodstream, the platelets, when there's disruption and a blood clot disrupts the flow of blood. And when it does that, it can release more thrombin. And so a blood clot can grow. And so it might just be a small one that may grow over time or it may resolve. All right, Rick, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I'm glad you're well. Thank you. Appreciate that. What does that have to do with me as a personal trainer. Why are you talking about this on the NASM CPT podcast? So I'm going to tell you why I believe this is important for personal trainers. We need to know, much like my friend Anna, who is a DPT, but I got to be honest, if somebody came to me with those signs and those symptoms, they told me the story that they were on a long flight, they have pain in their leg or in their calf, it feels uh, swollen, it's it pain, mine was really painful, really painful, uh, like just rubbing a little bit with my fingertips up and down was, it was really sore. I could tell something was wrong with my leg. Um, after a long flight or after a long drive, after many hours of sitting and not moving. So if your father uh, or if you are like my father, who was like epic on trying to get somewhere without stopping, just know that stopping is probably beneficial. Uh, we went on trips when we were kids. It was like, mm -mm, everybody, let's dehydrate, use the bathroom before you go, and this. So we're getting the we're getting to grandmother's house without stopping. Well, sometimes that stopping is okay. Why do personal trainers need to know this? Well, I know that you've been on a long trip. Your signs and symptoms. Are you feeling 
the soreness? Is it happening in one leg? It might be some numbness. It might be throbbing sensations. There might be swelling. There might be redness in the leg. And we need to know that because if you come to me and I know that story and I know that your calf is sore, your lower leg, maybe a little bit higher up in your leg after being on one of these long trips, long flights, then I know that exercise could dislodge a piece of that clot and an embolus could lead to an embolism, which could lead to a cardiac embolism, a pulmonary embolism, or a stroke. And knowing these things add to your depth of knowledge and it may save your client's life. So that's why we need to know about it. We need to be familiar with it. I'll tell you what, if you save your client's life, oh, well, they love you forever. They love you. And I know sometimes we don't want to do it. We don't want to be like, oh man, I, 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 you know what? I'd rather have X amount of dollars for this session than tell them, no, we can't do this session today. You should go see a doctor. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just like mine. Mine came back negative but I am so happy I went to the doctor just to get it checked out. All right. With that said, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to listen about the DVT, the deep vein thrombosis, and some of the contraindications of that and why that's important for personal trainers so that that DVT pieces of it don't break off travel and cause life-threatening issues for you, for your friends, for your family, for your clients. All right. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. That's inspiring people to fitness. If uh, I can say anything, like I just want to say thank you for being here. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, leave a comment if you don't mind. That's always appreciated. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to get in touch with me, you have an idea of something that you want to ask about, and maybe I can talk about it on the podcast, you can reach out to me via email, rick.richie at nasm.org, or you can hit me up on Instagram, direct message me at dr.rickrichie. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast. <laughs>